So the White House is going to name uh, Monica Bertignoli as the head of the National Institute of Health. What more do we know about her? Is this a good choice? You know, Marnie, I think it is an excellent choice because we're able to move into more stable leadership. Um, Dr. Bernanoli has been leading at the National Cancer Institute. She has been at the helm while the, the national plan to tackle cancer disparities, cancer morbidity and mortality, cancer prevalence rates has been developed. She is a cancer surgeon. She knows what it takes to be able to rehabilitate persons who are going through such a destructive and disabling diagnoses. Um, and she is a woman who has distinguished herself throughout her career. So this is definitely a welcome addition and one that we can look forward to. What would you and others in the medical profession like to see from somebody in that leadership role to help um, boost public confidence in national health care leaders as we've seen that wane during the pandemic? First and foremost, I want to see someone who focuses on equity and someone who understands how systems of oppression, for example, systemic racism, systemic sexism, or genderism have impacted health and life outcomes in this nation. We can no longer afford to have a one-size-fits-all approach to anything in healthcare or public health. So I would like to see someone who has not only a sensitivity to that, but a demonstrated leadership in that area. Someone Someone who understands the role of the human experience or person or whole person centered strategies in care and someone who can help the public uh, regain a sense of trust because there is an honest broker, someone who is able to translate the science in ways that are socially and culturally fluent to address the various different literacy levels in our country. Right. It's a big job and with that comes a big responsibility. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Let's talk about this new study and recommendation for black women to get mammograms 42 rather than 50. Uh, what's the data driving that change? You know, this is again to that point, a one size fits this all approach fails us because equity is always rooted and driven in need. And what we're seeing is not necessarily rooted in race and ethnicity, but it's rooted in systemic and institutional biases, systemic racism. What we know is that black women, while they have lower incidence of breast cancer, they actually die more than white women from breast cancer. And that's due to things like implicit bias. That's due to things like um, varying treatment modalities or recommendations not being made available to them. So things rooted in access to care, quality of care. So when you have literature that emerges such as this that says we should have an equity adaptive focus, one that says given this particular population and the systemic pressures, the structural factors that are contributing to the evidence of disease in these persons, this is a welcome addition. We already know that the American Cancer Society and others are recommending that physicians start to have a conversation with their patients around age 40 about whether or or not they should go ahead and institute yearly mammograms. And I can tell you as a black woman herself whose sister had breast cancer, I had this conversation with my physician and I started to screen with mammograms well above the age of 50. I'm now 47 and I've been doing mammograms for the past four years. Right, and knowing your personal history plays into that decision. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, the mask guidelines, we're starting to see that change. I was in a hospital recently, had to mask up. Um, is it prudent to lift those right now? What is prudent is to have the conversation, Marnie. That's what I want everyone to understand. Public health responds in, 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 in reflex to the data, right? Responds to where we are in the pandemic. And we are in a more stable or endemic phase of the pandemic. My concerns, however, are in patient facing areas of these healthcare facilities where you will have people of various immunocompromised statuses, people with chronic health conditions, people who are older, those populations are more at risk, people who have been historically excluded against, so black and brown populations, they may carry a different burden of disease risk. And so because of that, we have to have a dynamic understanding of which tools to pull out of our public health toolkit. So it's appropriate for us to be pulling back, you know, mask mandates and mask requirements, but I want it to happen in an informed way, one that is informed by what's happening in that community and one that is informed by the greatest diversity among patient populations. So it's appropriate to have this conversation, most certainly information driving uh, different actions. Um, it's important to look at it that way. Okay, so this latest study about Americans engaging in addictive behaviors, turning to alcohol and drugs and gambling and other things to combat things like depression and other mental health challenges. This is pretty alarming, but also probably not a surprise. 
No, it's not a surprise. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.